Hello everybody and welcome to this video where me and East talk about the likely decks that you're going to see in the SEAO Contenders Cup this weekend. The meta is in a really weird place because I feel like I'm seeing all kinds of crazy decks come out of nowhere. This conversation, we could be A, either spot on, or be completely off the mark depending on what transgresses in the next couple of days. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Actually, we were planning to film this video earlier, but then a bunch of new decks came out, like right before the latest Rage, and East was like, let's let's film a little bit later. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta research this a little bit more. I think the most likely culprits uh, that we're gonna see in lineups this weekend, obviously there's the uh, Invincible Monster Trio Grammarie Shadowcraft deck. That deck is a monster. I don't think it really has many bad matchups, if any at all. I think it's pretty much amazing. Yeah, it's really scary. I mean, I was watching the West Contenders Cup uh, over the past weekend, and one of the things that, you know, those guys over there were talking about is the fact that once Grimry gets, you know, invocated, you pretty much only have, you know, two or three turns left to live. Saying three turns is actually being quite generous. Sometimes you lose, you know, the, the turn up. Mm -hmm. And I think Shadowcraft got so many good cards this set, way overcompensating what they lost in the rotation. <laughs> Invincible right. Monster Trio, the, <laughs> the Great Pick Corpse. I mean, so many strong cards. And let's not forget Necro Impulse, Bro, which impul just yeah. finishes games out of nowhere. Yeah, so I think, I'm going to call it, most people are going to bring... Grammarie. I'm going to say like six out of eight players are going to bring Grammarie. I'm going to say it. Six out of eight? I'm going to say I'm 100% eight out of eight. Eight out of eight. Eight out of eight. Eight out of eight. I, I, would, I would, any amount of money in your pocket and any amount of money in my pocket, eight out of eight. The next deck that I think is the current ladder menace, what the common man hates the most, Ward Havencraft. What's your thoughts on this one? I actually had a chance to build this deck during the pre-release. Same. I played it with a couple of friends on stream and they were like, yeah, this is a problem. Uh, I could, <laughs> by turn three, I had a Sarissa out with two wards up in front of her, and they couldn't do anything. It's just like, uh, huh? Yeah, Sarissa going first is just absolutely disgusting. And I think the biggest issue is just how good Amvelt is. Like, that card is ridiculous. He does it all, man. He's a ward, he's a big body, and he just clears the board. And you can, in a lot of cases, you know, he's got that... 10 countdown, but you can kind of like change when that what turn that happens on, which is really good for, you know, making sure your opponent doesn't have really impactful plays or just reducing the impact of plays that they do make on the board. Not to mention the fact that Wilbert's in the deck, so the more wards you play, the more damage you do as well. And then you also have Raw, so you just have to live in order to win. Like, it's, <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> it, there's so much that the deck can do in terms of damage. And okay, remember, Anvelt also deals damage to face, and Sarissa can res Anvelt, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> Just awesome. I hear what you're saying. It's just awesome. <laughs> One thing about this deck, as the meta has progressed, it's also changed in a lot of ways. Now, the current build, I think, is way more control heavy than it used to be. Uh, people are running more Yukaris, they're running more Black Inscriptures, they're running more Blind Justices, and surprisingly, they're, they're even running Benevolent Blight. Like, they're going full wow. ward control. Uh, I think that's how the meta has shifted here. Because of how powerful cards like Ra are, just for inevitability. So even if you run out of gas on tempo uh, and your Anvelts don't push through, you still have the Wrath to just win the game. Uh, and of course, Zelgenia at the end as well. Obviously, it still can put out massive tempo because Sarissa. Shifting it more towards control just gives it another out and more inevitability. And I think this deck is an absolute menace. Yeah, I agree. You know, being able to put up a bunch of wars and get Wilbur's effect activated, your opponent could ev technically not attack into those. So then things like Raw, I've even, even seen some players run like uh, one of Shiva. Just to get that extra four damage on a couple of the different turns. Force you to do something. You can't just like wait it out and try to hope to get an OTK like on turn 10 or something like that. You have to you have to be pro proactive in stopping the deck. Right. And not to mention the fact that Yukari also just stops every other opponent's game plan as well. So in terms of inevitability, you've got it all, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> I think it's a deck that has pretty much every tool it needs to win. The only thing that beats it is Vincent Rune, but Vincent Rune loses to everything else. So I don't think Vincent Rune is going to be played. Although that's actually an interesting an interesting uh, thing to talk about. Do you think some people are going to bring Vincent just to snipe Wardhaven, or is it just a fool's gambit? A Japanese player, I don't remember the name of the guy, put out a really interesting and really simple to digest graphic of kind of like the top meta decks where he had like uh, Wardhaven as rock and like Grimry, uh, Turbo Grimry as like scissors. 
And then those are like the tier one decks. But then the other decks that are tier two all tend to beat Ward Haven. Things like uh, Control Portal, in some cases Evo Sword, Item Shop, Vincent Rune, like you said. I mean, a lot of these decks beat Haven at their own game, but they lose the Grimmer Shadow. So. Yeah, I know some players have already strategized that they're going to bring some off meta stuff just to try and Ooh. snipe the on meta stuff. I hope that we see something really spicy like that happen. And Same what would you here. say is the third most likely deck? Third most likely, um, I didn't really have it on my radar until I watched the uh, Temple Storm's Operation Tokyo event, as well as taking a look at some of the uh, JCG decks that happened over the, uh, the past weekend. I think Control Portal might be on the up and up, man. Mm hmm. The OTK with Dimension Dominator, Beisha, and what's it called? Homunculus? Yeah, being yeah. able to deal two damage at the end of the turn. Basically, completely uncounterable unless you perfectly Yukari, and even then, you're still left with two defense. Yeah, and it activates on turn nine, too. And then, not to mention the fact that you have the redundancy. So that if the Vesha doesn't, uh, sorry, if the Homunculus doesn't work, you still have Vesha World OTK. So there's two outs that way. The it's deck ridiculous. also cycles crazy with things like Kaiser being able to, if like you don't have the pieces you need in hand, well, play whatever you can and then just toss everything and just get an entirely new hand and say, okay, do I have what I need now to win? So it, it almost always without fail goes off on turn nine. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all the new draw tools it got, right? Mechanical designs is just basically an insight that can potentially recycle itself. Then you also still have focus mm -hmm. in play. And you'll never run yeah. out of resources either, even though you're tossing stuff away, because you have Ilganu, who always comes back, so... <laughs> Ilganu! I forgot about that. They also have, like, the 12 storm damage, just potentially if they can get a, a really aggressive early game and just close it out before turn 9. And also the Ilganu evolve effect of reducing the stats of the entire enemy board just lets you survive. And then the worst part is, if you get the Ramiel evo ramp off you do the otk even earlier which is crazy turning baby let's go <laughs> so for those uninitiated the otk is playing dimension dominator on capsule homunculus evolving dimension dominator to get the leader effect and then on turn nine you play awakened ragna play homunculus first to yep. regain your play points then play vesha then you win the game you just wait till the end of the turn and the damage does itself you know yeah i think portal has pretty much become on par with Haven in terms of how many control tools they have. Like, you think about Mounier, Box it of Puppets. People's days. Yeah. That too, yeah. Take out literally any threat the opponent has, and they can't do anything about it. They can just cry, I guess, and post on Reddit later. I also like how this deck made Slouse good. I watched the, uh, the Operation Tokyo event, and the amount of Slouses that came out, like, in some, in some cases, players were playing double Slouse on a turn, to take up board space and to just ruin uh, the, the other players' like, cards in hand. Being able to just, you know, they get the random effects, but one out of three, one out of three, you're probably gonna get the card, uh, the card cost increase for your opponent's hand, right? So yeah, I agree. I think that deck is an absolute menace, which is surprising given how uh, good Artifact Portal was going into the set. So I mean, those are the top three decks, right? We've got Turbo Grimmery, we've got um, Ward Haven, as well as potentially Control Portal. Is there anything else that you're on the lookout for? Outside of the main three obvious picks, uh, there are a couple of, like you said, tier two and below decks that could potentially be used in lineups to snipe other people. Uh, for example, uh, in terms of Haven, Outside of the Ward Haven craft, there's also Heal Control Haven using the new uh, Holy Sanctuary card. I think the only thing stopping that from being a menace is Portal because of stuff like Box of Puppets and Mounier absolutely just taking care of the Holy Sanctuary, no problem. Uh, yeah. But if that was not an option, then I think Heal Control Haven could do some work. Do you have any love for uh, Evo Sword anymore? <sighs> I think Evo Sword is an okay deck, but I think it really fell off because uh, Shadow exists. So it's a little Shadows bit hard. Shadow exists. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning of the set, Evo Sword was a, a huge menace. But then uh, because the, the Gremory uh, IMT list wasn't super obvious at the start, that's why I feel like Sword uh, took the lead there. But then once people figured it out, it, w it became much, much harder to run Sword, especially in tournament where, you know, the player level is so high. We were talking about OTK Portal Craft, but there's also another mm. list that, again, I feel like was super popular and then kind of fell off recently, but it could still definitely make an appearance. Mm. It's uh, Artifact Portal Craft. Like, what do you think about that? With the rotation of Artifact Duplicator, the deck has had to get cards that just give you um, basically more artifacts for basically nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, who was the new card? Carmelia, is that her Carmelia. name? Carmelia, yep. 
she is absolutely bonkers. Four play point, what is it? Eight ten stats on evolve? Pretty much. I mean, with yeah. all the, the resources you get. And you get two artifacts on a turn. In a deck where you're trying to aim to get a total of six different artifacts played during uh, throughout the game, getting two in a turn for the cost of one card is really good. Yeah, and two in a turn that are actually quite difficult to get outside of Vertex Colony. So, uh, they're rare artifacts too, which is just even better. So I, I think, think the, the deck, deck could is, still yeah. do a lot of work, yeah. Especially since Absolute Modesty hasn't rotated yet. Yeah, I mean, damage over time, it's basically, you know, uh, what is it, Absolute Valde. One of the key new cards I wanted to bring up in the new Artifact Portal list, though, is how effectively they make use of Ilga New. I've had Artifact Portal Crafts face me, and they get the Storm effect off by turn 8. This is no joke. I Seriously? Think, yes, with the amount of Artifact Flooding they have, with Rebel yeah. Against Fate... Uh, Ilganu herself coming back to hand, then of course Carnelia now. Uh, it's actually super easy for them to get to 20 destroyed. And then uh, alongside Modesty and all the other damage and tempo tools they have, I feel like the 12 damage that, remember, also summons bullet bikes when they die. Uh, oh, that's right. I feel like Ilganu maybe in Control Portal is used more for the uh, value and evolve effect, but I think in Artifact mm. Portal, the, the 12 damage storm is not a pie in the sky dream at all. I've never really had that happen, so I'm, I'm really surprised to hear that. Hopefully some player this weekend shows us uh, that in, you know, in real time. Happened to me twice in a day, and uh, I was not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> some people have all the luck. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the next list, which I've been playing a lot and I want to talk about. It's Item Shop. Oh, you're a capitalist, huh? Yeah. Hey, open for business. And I think... It's, it's so much better now because you no longer have to rely on Verge Walker anymore. You have so many tools. You don't need to run any followers, meaning you don't need to run Sorcery and Solidarity, meaning you don't need to run Verge Walker. It's way more consistent now. And uh, part of that is the new card, and I called this when it was revealed. Running Embodiment of Kakaitis in Item Shop yeah. is insane. Basically, it's a, uh, it's a generator for Scion of Desire, let's be honest. Yep, uh, yep. And that's it. <laughs> adding healing to a rune OTK deck, much like Rooney broke spell boosts last expansion, adding Scion of Desire just pushed item shop definitely into competitive viability. And I think you mentioned earlier that this can snipe other decks because when you roll well, the win condition is so much earlier than every other deck, like turn seven OTK. Yeah, I think it really, uh, it kind of vies for that spot alongside Grimry. Grimry, uh, Turbo Grimry typically gets online around turn seven, sometimes turn six if they high roll, but mostly turn seven. And a deck that does the same thing like this, I mean, what, what can you do? Mm -hmm. You're vying to get to turn nine with something like Control Portal, and they're winning on turn seven. You, you know, you kind of, you feel rushed as soon as the match starts. How do you feel about uh, cars like, you know, Ramiel as well as Alyoska, who have the ability to just, you know, completely ignore effect damage, where this deck, you know, typically tends to get most of its re removal from? Yeah, Ramiel and Alyoska definitely are huge deterrents to this deck. I wouldn't say they're as big of a problem for item shop as they are for, say, Ball Blood. Uh, I think mm, Ramiel and Alyaska have killed Ball Blood, <laughs> but I think for Item Shop, uh, it is an issue, but the, you do have answers. Of course, you can always play a Sign of Desire and evolve it into the Ramiel or Alyaska and have the effect clear the rest. Uh, you still have uh, Sudden Showers, let's not forget, uh, and uh, that's right, yeah. you still have followers with Silent Lab as well as uh, potential Madcap followers as well, and I feel like uh, people are also running Mystic Absorption nowadays, which lets you deal with that Ooh. as well. So a couple other lists now. I think those were most of the common lists. Now these mm. ones are the ones that are really off the wall. Recent development. Super spice. We can talk Cayenne about. Cayenne pepper, yeah. This is one that you taught me about, is the <laughs> return of Amatas Forest Craft. You want to talk about this? A lot of the decks that we see now, things like Grimmery, I guess pretty much any deck with the exception of Ward Haven and maybe Evil Sword, really have not so impactful early games. Decks like Amatas Forest really do take advantage of the fact that your opponent isn't doing anything in the early game. They're literally just building their hand to get to, to get those fairies, drop an Amatas, the fairies get buffed, Divine Smithing, the fairies get buffed, Lumbering Carapace, you could just have a 5-5 five, five storm potentially with, uh, with Divine Smithing, and they can kill you on turn six. I mean, yeah. we talked about these decks that win on turn seven, but if they're not doing anything before that, the more aggressive decks, 
the world willing, you know, the more <laughs> yeah, aggressive the world decks. Will. Yeah, yeah, there's a reason why Aggro Shadow isn't here. But yeah, I think Amatas does have explosive power, I should say, in the early game that maybe Aggro Shadow doesn't. I mean, on stream, we beat Ward Haven with Amatas, and that was, that was a wild time. So yeah, I, I'm kind of a believer. I don't know if it's going to be a, a widespread, but if somebody mm. really wants to play Forest, uh, it's a deck they could bring. When I was talking to Chrysome about Amatas, competitive player Chrysome, part of Team Dawnbreakers, he told me uh, that because of Shadow, Wolfrod is now better because Shadow has so much draw that uh, if your Amatas game fails, you can just steal their draw and then win that way, which I think is hilarious. Now let's talk about my favorite class, which I feel like has fallen off. Uh, it's Dragoncraft. Discard Dragon was really good early in the expansion because it was very easy to build, but I think it's definitely fallen off now. There mm. is, however, a new spicy tech that Chrysome again taught oh, me no. about. <laughs> oh no, I know what it, I know what you're gonna say. And I go ahead. Go he's ahead. been he's climbing back. with it. He's, he's been back. win streaking with it. No. Guess who's back? No! Don't Valdane, say it! Valdane's no. back. <laughs> <laughs> this list, you'll see it on screen now. I'll edit this in. It's crazy. With resplendent Phoenix, all of these insane endgame cards, like uh, Dragon Devouring Dread, Ernst Justice, have Roost Up, you Valdane, Tree Tree Tree, draw all your crazy late game cards, 4 play point Boom Devil, hello, 2 4 play point Boom Devils plus Valdane thing. I was really hoping that Valdane would have a chance to rest. You know, he's been busy he has for been the busy. last year. Mm hmm. And it seems like you know, he's going to put in the overtime for Contenders Cup. <laughs> Back at the office, yet again. Not again. Yeah. Valdane, suit and tie, cutting down trees. That is the video. Those are the decks we think are going to show up in the Contenders Cup. Make sure you tune in. Southeast Asia, Oceania, Contenders Cup. This weekend, two-day event. Me and East are casting. What do you say? Can we threaten them? Can we threaten them? Do it. All right, hold on. Or else. That is a very, that's very scary, all right? If you don't want East to turn into a literal demon and find you and your family, then make sure to tune in to Contender's Cup. There's a lot on the line. The winner of Contender's Cup gets a seat to the World Grand Prix, and you know what you win in the World Grand Prix? You could win a million US dollars. You know what you could do with a million US dollars? Four packs of ramen. Yeah. Yeah. Four packs of ramen every day for the rest of your life. So <laughs> make sure to tune in. There's a lot on the line. Guys, remember, like this video if you did. Like it if you did it anyway. CPM gang, what's good? And uh, we'll catch you at Contenders Cup. Be there or else I will find you.